Hi guys, welcome back to another video tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to be doing a tutorial on Python and Django, and we're going to be creating a scorekeeper app in Django. Um, Django is a really, really very popular framework, so I'm excited to get into it. Um, but real quickly, let's just go over some of the topics we're going to cover. You need your basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript, obviously Python, because Django is a Python framework in Django. Uh, authentication. Uh, Django has a built-in authentication uh, framework for um, getting people, um, you know, get maintaining a person's like user ID, password, and such and so forth. We're going to extend that and add to that. Uh, the models, obviously, uh, because for database we need models so that we can migrate and map those in. Visual Studio, although if you prefer to follow along using Visual Studio code, you are more than welcome to, or another similar one, but I use Visual Studio because they generate some really nice templates. Uh, pagination, which means if you get 100 records, we can look at the first 20 on one page and the next 20 on the other. Um, if you're not familiar, uh, just Google Django pagination to read up on the technical documentation. And finally, SQLite, which is the preferred um, SQL database storage uh, for uh, Django. You can use other ones, but that's typically the preferred one that comes out of the box. So what you need to get started, basic understanding, Python, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, uh, Visual Studio with Python extension. Um, again, you can follow along in Visual Studio Code if you prefer, and DB Browser for SQLite. The reason we're going to need the DB Browser is because we're going to be looking at what's in the models. So that way we can carry the back, query the database intelligently, because sometimes Django generates these um, these models in the database that have fields that are uh, a little bit maybe not what you would expect. So you, you might be expecting uh, to query it one way and you actually have to query it a completely different way than you might expect. So we'll use the DB browser to kind of explore, make sure our migrations are correct, and just go in and figure out what all is in that database so we can query it correctly. So here's the roadmap for our project. We're gonna create a Django app and configure our settings. We're gonna build our models, which is gonna to map to the database. We're gonna build our index template. We're gonna build the create game template for creating a new game with, the, with teams and scores. And a, a game will have up to five teams. Uh, we're gonna create the view game template so we can view what the game was, who the players were, and what the scores were, and what the date was. Um, and we're gonna build our create games template view URL and apply pagination, which again, pagination is when we go ahead and we, um, we, uh, we, we, um, you know, sort and filter, uh, based on if we have a hundred records, we want to show 20 on each page. So in a nutshell, that's what pagination is. All right, guys, section one, um, just getting started here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create a Django app add a super user run our initial migration and add some basic config settings and settings.py. So let's go ahead and close this down, bring our Visual Studio up over here, and we've got create a new project here. Um, and we're looking through Python, obviously, because Django is a Python framework. And we're gonna select Django web project, and we're gonna come down over here and hit next. And then we can kind of score, uh, name this anything we want, we can call it um, Django score keeper app like that. And we'll go ahead and click create. And this takes just a minute. Uh, once we create it, we'll go ahead and run it. Um, add a super user and run it just to make sure it's running. And it popped up over on my other screen over here. So let me just grab it and bring it over so you guys can see. Oh, this freaking thing. So here we are. Um, so looking looking good. Well, let me fix something here over here. Okay. There we go. Uh, looking real solid here. So um, as you can see, we have our basic um, our basic initial uh, migrations, uh, which is which is empty because I guess we haven't done anything yet. Um, and we also have some instructions here to add a super user, which we're going to do. We're not going to add a registration feature to the app on this run, but we may extend it in future editions um, to kind of go over the topic. But we will take this 
recommendation here and create a super user just so that we can test the login and logout. So we're going to right click and go to Python, go to Django, create super user, and that's going to run a command for us in the console that's going to allow us to create the super user. It's really simple, right? So we'll just call it super user and I'll leave the password blank. And then for, um, for well, email address blank for the password, we'll do something like, I don't know, um, you know we'll do something stupid because obviously it's just my local machine. Um, uh, water123, one, two, th one, two, water123. Password is too common. Bypass, yeah, because this is just for development purposes. So now I've got a super user, so cool. So now we can test the login and logout functionality. <clears throat> So that was pretty easy. Um, and then we also want to make sure we enable our migrations and get everything rolling here. Uh, but we should already have this DB SQLite 3 here. Uh, but we want to make sure that it has the correct data. So we're going to go ahead and kind of take a quick look around here uh, uh, at, at that. <laughs> Sorry, anyways, I'm rambling. Um, but one real quick thing that we do need to fix is if we go ahead and run this, um, <clears throat> well, actually two things real quick we want to fix, two or three before we get started, because I want to make sure you guys get the right settings for your app, as opposed to just having it be whatever. And of course it opened on another screen over here. So this is the error that I'm talking about. You see when we run, it's, it, it clicks, it pops up an error, it says static files is not a registered tag library. So I'll show you the detailed error message over here on our browser. This is what happens. I don't know why Visual Studio hasn't fixed this. As of um, October of 2021, they have not fixed this issue. Um, there is no such thing as static files. There is static, which is a, a library where it allows you to load your, your CSS files so that you can import things. There is no static files, okay? So just to be clear, Visual Studio, this needs fixed. So, Real quick, static files is not a registered library. We'll go in here real quick. What you do is you go into templates. And as far as I know, in the, in the Visual Studio templates, it's in two places. All right. The first is in the layout, which is right here. We're going to double click it, bring it up. And where it says static files, we're just going to make it say static. And hit save. Same thing over here in the login partial, I believe. Let me see. Uh, no, maybe it's somewhere else. Maybe it's in login. Nah, it's in login. It's not in login partial. So static, static, like that. All right, so you change it from static files to static, and now we hit refresh. Ta-da, we made our first Django app. Awesome. So last but not least, let's go ahead and register our login URLs. I'm working off some notes here and some technical documentation. You need login URLs and login redirect URLs because you want to make sure that you apply that functionality because if you don't, Django will automatically send it to a Django URL and that's not necessarily what you want to do. So you're better off telling Django, hey, if somebody logs in successfully, um, that's bright. Um, if somebody logs in successfully, we go ahead and say, Okay, this person is logged in successfully. Um, you know, it, let's let's send them to the home page, or let's send them to a custom page that the user has built. So we're going to go ahead and we'll hop the execution of our app, and then we'll go into um, we'll go into um, uh, let me see here. Where is it? Settings .python. And look, we got all this. This is all standard generated stuff that Visual Studio gives you. Great, great place to start. I love Visual Studio. Big Visual Studio guy. Um, and we're going to create a section here, which is called login URLs. So just follow along. Um, of course, GitHub repository if you get lost. So you can see where you where you kind of got off the got off the rails there if you you know screw up. So we're going to go login URL equals dash login like so in single quotes. Then we're gonna go login underscore redirect URL equals 
dash, which will send them to the home page. And then finally, log out, redirect URL. Same thing, because otherwise you get these weird errors and, and it's not your fault that you're getting those errors. Django just has some built-in administrative login logout URLs that if you map those without actually creating the, the view, the template and the view in your app itself, it'll give you an error message. So we're gonna go ahead and avoid that because I made that mistake a couple of times now. So I'm gonna get, get, give you guys a shortcut here and make sure that you are ahead of the game. So that's that. And finally, one last change we're gonna make here, and this is just to make it a little bit more user friendly. If you right click your project here and click properties, and you go, and it's a debug launch URL where it says uh, local host, we're gonna explicitly define uh, a port here. And the reason why is because if we don't, uh, Django is gonna generate us a new port each time. And that gets really annoying because then you have browser windows that become useless and you hit the refresh button. You're like, why isn't it where, oh, it's because it's on a new port now. We pointlessly moved it. So I'll just make it one, two, one, five, four will be the port, and I, I believe it could be up to five digits for a port, um, but make it whatever, it could be any four, five digit number. But you wanna express this uh, explicitly, because if you don't, again, the Python virtual environment is gonna regenerate a new port every single time. You don't wanna do that. You want it to be uh, an already laid out port. So let's check our steps here and see if we did everything. Um, I don't know if we need to run an initial migration, um, because I think that um, that Django actually does that for us. But we can go ahead and check real quick, and we need to uh, start doing stuff with migrations anyway. So when you, when you wanna do migrations in Visual Studio, you right click your project file, the Python project file, and you go down to open in terminal. And this actually gives you access to everything. With Visual Studio, you automatically get your virtual environment, you get pip, you get um, Django admin, you get a bunch of things, and it's great. So again, a lot of good reasons to love Visual Studio. You can do the same exact thing in Visual Studio Code. Again, I'm not knocking Visual Studio Code. I know a lot of people love that platform. Um, definitely has its advantages. It's a lot more lightweight than Visual Studio Code, um, but I'm just more of a Visual Studio guy myself. So we'll go python manage.py make migrations as such. No changes detected. So we're good, we're good. Um, Django has already pre-migrated and pre-seeded the database with stuff for us that includes username, password, and all that stuff. So we don't need to run any migrations, but it's good that we go into the console and we check. So that's it for this section. Let's get moving on to the next section.